Tokyo Olympics 2020, just a few days to commence, and we are at the National Olympics Committee of Sri Lanka to have a chat with our president, Mr. Suresh Subramaniam, who has been working very tirelessly and under very difficult circumstances. Good evening, Mr. Subramaniam. Good evening. Let me start off. What has been the challenges of picking the team, and also how have you overcome these challenges? See, let me say challenges are one thing I'm used to because from the time you start hitting the ball or in any sport, it's a challenge. So challenge is one thing I'm very happy to take on. But this time the challenge, we didn't know our enemy. So it was a very big challenge, not only for me, for the whole world. When it, this pandemic, I don't have to tell you. It was a huge challenge. Let me break it down. The challenge was first for the IOC postponing the event. I think the postponement was the easy thing. But difficulty is you got to keep in mind you are postponing an event by one year where these players has to make sure they are trained to do a job that have been postponed by a year. So which means they got to keep training for another year which was a very very difficult thing that is on the side of the players look at the administrators coaches officials everybody's targets have been shifted the goal post have been shifted so it was a tough thing and country like us it became even difficult because the simple reason is uh, amita most of our athletes they were training in sri lanka uh, rather colombo but they are boys and girls from outside colombo so when the lockdown came in after a week or two, they decided to go back to their home village. Now, what do they do? They can't train, they don't have the facilities, they are not allowed to leave the house. Some of the parents are so happy their children had come back. They started eating their home food, they started gaining weight. So, it was a huge challenge for us. So, what to do as Olympic committee, even we had to work from home. I was able to call, bring in a lot of past captains, past presidents in various sports. We used Zoom conferences, made sure these athletes are kept motivated. And then uh, National Olympic Committee ran educational program for the coaches, for the administrators, so that we were at least for a week, six hours, we were involved doing motivational program for the athletes and uh, educational program for various coaches and all that. So that way we were able to make sure uh, they were not left alone we were part of it and and also i must uh, tell you amita the, under the army commander uh, general shavendra silva being the national sports selection committee i was able to approach they are unit the army unit helped a lot of these athletes by providing rations you know all that were done so that some of them didn't even have access to those so i was very grateful then coming back Close coming now, we are just a couple of days away from uh, the Olympics. We had all of us to be vaccinated again. I had to turn to him and he made sure all our athletes, coaches, officials all vaccinated. So, yes, challenges, but we met the challenges. Yes, as uh, Mr. Subramaniam said, uh, he's used to playing, uh, facing challenges and playing the ball, an eminent uh, and former Sri Lankan tennis player. Um, Mr. Subramaniam, what is your expectation of our team at the Olympics uh, this time? My expectations are very simple. They must go, they must be proud that they are representing the country and I'm hoping all will win the medal all can win but it's not that easy it's easy for me to say all but they have to give their best as i told somebody two sports uh, qualified on merit there is gymnastic and equestrian they got qualified on merit even the 100 meter runner but though his timing is still not up to it Outside chance, somebody is going to pull. I don't know who somebody will pull because we have as Olympic Committee and the National Federation, Ministry of Sport, we have done our best. As Susantika very recently when we had the Team Lanka launch, she said that she never had any of these easy passage for her to go and win she has to had so many obstacles so she herself told the athlete that you all have blessed you all have been given everything that you all wanted it's up to you to go and perform so our athletes are eager and determined to do so i hope they will do their best 
because in to me to win a medal you see i'm involved only last three years i don't think in three years you can produce medals so last three years we had paid the wave and we had wave for our children and the athletes what i am expecting on what they are supposed to do so on our innoci part we had done our best so it's up to them to perform now matilda carlson equestrian show jumping for women can you explain this event itself uh, suresh and then you know how uh, if you're taking part for the first time and what are our chances on that no you see matilda carlson she came to noc maybe 3 to 4 years ago and she she showed her records and she had won couple of events and she wanted to represent sri lanka so we were only too happy our secretary got involved and organized the sri lankan passport though she had been living in sweden for a long time it's a very expensive sport her parents have spent a lot of money and still continue to spend money when she did well we had put her name down and we had encouraged her the sport is unknown to sri lanka though we have a federation here i don't think anybody had reached this heights or even to the national heights having said that when she was participating under sri lankan flag it became that much easier because there were no other participants from sri lanka or in the neighboring countries though i mean i say india pakistan not much so it was very easy for her to compete in this region so she did well so during just before the lockdown i'm talking 2020 there were certain events that she participated and she did very well the events called centropes okay, she got the 10th place and again two events in uh, centropes is in saint france she became eight so with that her ranking improved then she was automatically qualified lockdown came in as you know most of the sports in asian region got cancelled so she could not participate in this region event not only her lot of our other athletes so naturally her ranking came down and uh, somebody else were uh, you know naturally so whereas ioc has to intervene and said no qualifying date was sometime last year if anybody who had qualified that's the arrangement when they postponed the event that was the arrangement for all the sports they had almost 60% of the sports qualified was done so this fell into that category so ioc through cas got involved and gave a ruling as at that day she is qualified and she will remain she still training in fact today she is taking part in a competition today tomorrow she still training she is training very hard so jumping is not a is very dangerous sport so i hope uh, hope and pray that nothing goes wrong we and first time for sri lanka so we didn't know let me tell you an interesting part um see we had to accredit various people to go in for this sports so there was a request for eight people to represent for this particular sports so when you say eight all of them are foreigners nobody from here except the manager who is going horse trainer the groomer veterinary surgeon dietitian for the horse then the dietitian for the rider trainer for a rider you know and the horse owner also has to go but ioc with this current uh, situation ioc did not agree and they only gave four people so we had to give her a choice who are the four we use in the end of the day she only will know who are the so that so there are four people going all four of foreigners likewise even the, though it's your question was only equestrian let me touch on the gymnastic also new to us first time sri lanka got qualified there again this player wanted so many to accompany unfortunately i you see gave only two so therefore choice was her to whoever she wants we allow that is the her coach who have been working with her from younger days and the secretary who have been helping her so those two she had wanted so those two were going and the japanese coach who have been training her also going to be on the ring side so these are things so it's a interesting sport first time i'm going to see it so i cannot say much about it i will certainly be able to elaborate when they re- re- return yes i hope they both as they are new sports for sri lanka they will do well at the olympics let's hope and pray
Mr. Subramani, on the wild card entry, can you just explain the concept and how it works? See, wild card entry is something like this. They call it a wild, it is wild card, but in the IOC parlor, they call it tripartite agreement. When you say tripartite agreement, that is between the International Federation, IOC, NOC is involved. So, for instance, now this uh, gymnastic, she originally qualified on tripartite agreement. When you say tripartite agreement, she did very well, but she didn't meet the criteria at the time of selection. But there were few other events were coming. So uh, then what happened, then they looked at it, okay, she is the best girl because she trained in Japan, uh, supported by IOC. So IOC first give preference to them, but of course they have to have their, um, um, they have to maintain the criteria. Somebody just because you are IOC, so she had the criteria. So when they looked at it, she was selected. I still remember at that time, we had a choice of accepting that or wait, we still had time, wait for a week and accepting uh, getting her on her merit. So we waited, since we had time, we waited for that. Then she got selected on her merit because a couple of events she did well, we put on. So when she was selected on merit, which means we had a choice of a, another wild card for another sport. Same sport you won't get. So the, how it comes in, for instance, if you take Diluka. Diluka, when he started the Olympic thing, it, he was about 166 in the world ranking, he didn't have a chance. Whether it's a wild card or otherwise, he didn't have a charm. So, when he wanted to train, I still remember Niluka is the chairman of the, um, the athlete commission. Athlete commission also sits on the NOC board. So, Niluka, while we on the board, he sent me a proposal. Sir, this is the proposal I want to participate in the Olympic in the same room. So, I rejected this. Uh, proposal, I said, no, I cannot fund you, rejected, entire board was unhappy that I did, but nobody questioned me. After the meeting is over, Niluka asked me, sir, what is the reason that you rejected me? I said, yes, I rejected you because you have already participated two Olympics, so to participate the third Olympic, I am not there to spend. I will, participation, I will give it to a young, young youngster who will be useful. So if you assure me that you are going to lose weight and you are going to play for nationals which is coming up and you should win the nationals, if you can do these two, let me consider you. So he said, okay. So he went, to be honest, he lost 15 kilos in weight and he won the nationals. Then I didn't have a choice. Then I spent him and sent him. So he dropped to 99. About a month ago, his ranking dropped to 99. Then he had a chance of, he the best here. In the world also, when they give wild card to various countries, they will not take more than two players into the draw from one country. The third slot go to the deserving and the higher ranking player. So, Niluka automatically got in that way. Even for tennis, it's the same story. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody in the top uh, top 100. <coughs> That's how it works. So, they if say 10 players in one country, they will not give all 10. They will only take two. With IOS, you want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to participate. That's the only way you can. So, most of the wild cards out of the three, uh, three people who are got on merit, the other were on wild card but they were the best in our country and also the wild card is applicable to the rest of the world so they have to choose the best out of the lot if we had a say, if, say suppose Niluka was 166 he didn't have a chance so that's how the wild card is given uh, as the chairman of the National Olympics Committee here in Sri Lanka, what are your future plans of improving athletics and also any plans of adding on new sports for the Olympic competitions? At the moment, we have 34 Olympic sports in Sri Lanka. So, I am very honoured and proud to say this is the first time we have seven disciplines participating. First time. So, with these two, seven disciplines. Unfortunately, this time we missed out on archery. The boy went to the second round. If he had won one more round on the qualifying, which took place a month ago, he had a chance. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So, missed archery. We missed wrestling also the same way. 
again the boy he went for his qualifying round unfortunately he could make it so as far as the future is concerned if we continue the same way the way we are continuing because we need national olympic committee the national federation and the ministry of sport we have to work hand in glove if we work the same way because national federation in this country is they are to produce champion all the support to produce the champions are given by the ministry of sports we are they are to make sure that they get medals these are the three function medals is our job so first they have to become a champion then we take them out and train them with all our support and backing we have so what we did this time was uh, which is maybe not our purview but we cannot ignore saying it's not our purview is where we are being going wrong you know you your brothers all of them were great sportsmen they know once you leave school where do they go if they don't make it to the national team they are lost out so we had come in between now and saying look we'll take you on till you get take something like maybe 3 to 4 years before they get into the national side so we can't afford to lose them so we had stepped in and started the junior development program under the chairmanship of shirant peer is very knowledgeable guy and we had got one sponsor chris bro who is sponsoring us so we have picked up 24 athletes island wide in different sports they have been given a stipend of 50000 rupees to make sure that their basics are met every one a weekly we are looking at their progress they have to keep updating on the website so we exactly know the what athlete is doing and we want to make sure from the junior level they continue without any break you see end of the day once they leave school if they don't go to university they go want to work and all that so we want to tell them look next 5 years we'll back you from leaving school so that you are in the sport then we will make sure if they make it good for all of us so those are the things we have to make sure the athlete is comfortable they must be comfortable and confident that we won't let them down that is very important so that is what we are doing at the moment is as you mentioned the chris bro next champion initiative how does it help the, or how do you all work together with them and what is the plan for the future on that uh, with those sponsors no you see we have signed up uh, agreement with them for next 3 years so there is a portal that have been initiated and all these at least 24 athletes i mentioned they have the portal so they will say one is their requirement diet what they are doing what their coach is doing if they say athlete 100 meter athlete what is their timing every day every week is posted they may need spikes or they need so those are the posted so we make sure it is given as i told you up to 50000 rupees worth we keep sending them sending them even money you know you got to make sure they are very very comfortable so that they don't have to think where do i go for for my spike or my so they must be free here so their job is only concentrate on running or playing football or whatever sport they are involved so we as i told you we have picked up 24 including golf this time and tennis no still not nobody is committed on tennis yet the end of the day it's a commitment that they are also willing to make it's not only us the children must commit their parents must commit the school that they are going they must back then only it makes it easy so all of us has to work together if we want to win a race so that's it sometimes it's very hard when a player going and only one person is allowed to accompany you know that person can one person did you know many supported him but unfortunately all of us can't go so it's a tough task but anyway what to do whatever we have to do what is possible Mr. Subramaniam, thank you very much for spending your very valuable time with us at this time and uh, sharing your thoughts on the Olympics. So, wish you all the best and all the team members. I hope we bring back a medal.